Hi, everybody. Um, Julie summed it up great there, just made it a little bit easier for me. I think any of us who are involved in research, we have so much to tell you. And to have 10 minutes is really challenging. And what's really exciting for myself and the research team and the names you'll see in front of me, my wonderful colleagues here in Children's Palliative Care, is that you're the very first audience to, to hear these findings. We haven't even formally submit, um, presented them to the National Development Committee, so really you're on the cutting edge now of a, a new presentation. I have a lot of information to share with you, and again, I have only the 10 minutes, so I'm going to, to race through things. Um, some of the information, you've been informed already. So Sheila did, and Mary did a, a wonderful um, introduction to children's palliative care and setting the scene for all of you, and those of you who are working in the field already will knew, know many of them. But I think how this research came about was that um, through the NDC uh, and through the national policy, we were aware that there was a lot of work going to be starting and had started in 2012, uh, 2013. So uh, a group of us came together, the names that you've seen, and we said, you know, uh, all of us were involved in research, and we said, um, how can we... What, what things should we tackle first? And all of us are working as partners together in this field. We all had our own priorities for research. Um, and then a couple of us working in the academic field also were aware of students, wanted to do different research projects. And we thought we all had our own ideas of, you know, what's the most important, but we thought we really need to nail it down. Um, so that was our rationale for it. So all of you have seen, and Sheila's explained to you the national policy, but, but research is a really important criteria, and we haven't mentioned that really. Um, it, it stated that um, all people, all healthcare providers, should have the opportunity to engage in research. And sometimes research is a really frightening word for everybody, but when we talk about research, we talk about service evaluation, we talk about audit, um, and there's all, lots of different levels. So that was the impetus, really, of what we were doing. So we chose to do uh, a Delphi method. Some of you may be familiar with that. We haven't got time to really go into it too much, but I, what I want to stress to you is, is that the key thing is that we needed a panel of experts to get us started in the whole, in the, in, in the whole um, process. Um, what was also uh, important is that uh, participation uh, was anonymous. Um, as so far as it can be in Ireland, and I'm sure you all know what, what that means. Um, it was a, an iterative uh, process, so we needed feedback, and people were able to have time in between the rounds and th really think about things that were important to them. That caused us a little bit of problem, and I'll explain that later on. So we also measured the response as well, so, um, and I've mentioned already the expert uh, input. So, um, and as I've said, I'm going to go through this just very quickly. We were also aware, those of us uh, who were doing this study, that there was already previous studies gone before us. In the Irish context, Brenner et al. looked at the situation for paediatrics um, and nurses delivering care in the acute setting. So we wanted to do something that was really helpful to children's palliative care. Um, so round one, we identified our panel of experts through our National Development Committee. So that was a very easy thing to do. Um, so we had to remind them a couple of times to fill in the, and, and to organize a survey for us. So what was really fantastic is that we identified 72 research priorities. Really fantastic, but also, as I said, we all have our favorites. Um, so these were grouped into a needs assessment, service development, serve, uh, policy, education and training, and support. And again, those of you, if, I, if we had longer and I could do a head count, we all have our favorites amongst those. Um, again, just very quickly, um, after we gathered our, our, we did our interviews with the healthcare providers, our panel of experts, we were able to define um, through SurveyMonkey and set, circulate that um, uh, via online, really. So uh, 47 surveys were presented, giving a response rate of 87%. Um, and the, rank, the results were ranked in order of highest mean re rating, and I, I won't get into that too much. I just wanted to put this up. There's a lot of information here. Just wanted to show you what we were left with for round two. Okay, so it was beginning to narrow down, if you can see what we were trying to do. Okay. So round three, so again, in order to in increase consensus on the research priorities, um, the second survey for round three was circulated, and the, these 23 items were included. So the analysis of round three showed some changes in the consensus. So as a group, we came together and we said, gosh, look what's going on, the shifting patterns. But some of us were able to explain that, and I think some of you in the audience would be able to, 
you know, we might have just all been at a seminar about symptom management, or we might have all been at a sen seminar, or there may be work going on about education and training. So people were influenced uh, and made shifts in their priorities accordingly. So we moved on to round three. You see we're coming down to 14 now. So again, the shifts now, okay? So uh, many Delphi studies stop at round three, but we wanted to uh, make sure that this study was possibly as good as it could be. So we decided to do one final round. Um, again, the response rate was quite, there was a dip in response rates between round two and three, but response rate was significant, was, was steady for round four. So as you can see, number one was ranked as, um, uh, there was changes to the rankings in the development of specific training programs in, nurse, in, in children's palliative care. Um, and that's, that could be due to lots of factors. As I mentioned, there was a lot of discussions about, about education and children's palliative care. So around four findings, okay? So now we're left with nine. So these are our last findings and we group them into themes afterwards. What is good clinical governance? When is care provided in the home? How can good governance be maintained without increasing levels of bureaucracy for families? So these are the f nine issues that people decided are absolutely the top priorities. Development of a national strategy for interagency service provision in children's palliative care, 77.2%. 77 Development of specific training programs for nurses, 81%. Children's right perspective, including the voice of the child, creating linkages between maternity services, what are the needs of families caring for a child, development of an accurate database, and that's been mentioned by other presenters, care planning, what's the issues in, in relation to care planning for families. So key areas for future research, so we've grouped them into themes. Um, we hope to when we come back to the next National Development Committee, we're going to explore these themes and see what we, can, what we can do about this into the future. So a needs assessment, is this needed? Some of the other speakers today have talked about that this would be a priority. So our respondents in this would also agree that it is a priority. Service development and the need for effective clinical governance for children um, with life-limiting conditions was identified as a primary research priority. That's also similar to the 2005 needs assessment. Uh, policy, in line with the National Children's Strategy of 2000, the inclusion of the voice of the child in children's palliative care was identified where research is needed. How do we do that? How can we ensure that that's done? Education and training, the need for the development of specific training programs for nurses working in children's palliative care was identified as a key priority in the study. And we've heard today that there's different initiatives have already been done, but it's obviously not enough. Um, and in my later presentation, I'll talk about that as well. And support, bereavement supports. I think the NDC would re realise that um, on our task list and our work plan that we have, we haven't really looked at bereavement support. We've just had general conversations, but it's something that we need to do sooner rather than later. And look at increasing the links between the maternity and paediatric palliative care services and how we can enhance that a little bit better. So the limitations of this study is that the number of professionals engaged in full-time paediatric palliative care is low. So if you look at some of the international studies that are out there, um, Professor Lieben is in our audience, and they have huge numbers, and to look at their stats are huge. But we, we really do have low numbers. Um, the high attrition rate in this study between round three and four should be noted. The eminent researchers that we have with us today could maybe explain that, but it may be due to uh, a certain apathy, seeing an email coming in from my email address, oh my God, not her again. Sometimes people don't click on it and open it. So they were the kind of things that we needed to get. Um, and that's why we decided to do round four. The use of online technology, that was interesting for us as a, as a research group. Mainly con making control um, or ensuring control of your emails. So you have identified your core group of people. So if, for example, I'll just use it, you, Imelda. If I send it on to Imelda, maybe she feels, well, I haven't got time to do this. So she's going to hand it on to her colleague. So it was difficult for us to maintain control. And we didn't really know what the true response rate was. Um, the involvement of the specialty of children's palliative care is still a very rapidly developing, and I would say it's rapidly developing, uh, sometimes maybe on a monthly, monthly basis. So again, people's shift in priorities changed. There was a great deal of flux, really, um, and we should have expected to see that, I guess. 
So I'm coming to the end. I'm doing very well for time, actually. I thought I'd be stuck for time. I think it's really important to say that we could not have done this research without the support of Laura Lynn. And again, it was mentioned today that the voluntary sector is, is really key in supporting the work, um, and in this case, the work of the researchers. So we'd like to acknowledge thanks to them. Thank you.